Hello students, welcome back to the next session. In this session, we will be talking about requirements, elicitation and analysis. If you remember in the last session, we spoke about the introduction to requirements engineering process in which I gave you the various detailed steps that are involved in the requirements engineering. The first one we have seen was the feasibility study where I told you it will decide whether we can move forward with the project development or not. Now once we have uh, finalized and we have decided to move forward with the software development, the next step will be requirements elicitation, which is nothing but gathering the detailed requirements from the users and the stakeholders. Right? So why do we need to gather all these requirements to make sure that we understand what users are expecting from the software system that we are actually developing. So the process of gathering detailed information about the requirements from the users and the stakeholders is called as requirements elicitation. Now users, you know, the people who are actually directly interacting with the system. Now who are these stakeholders? Who are called as stakeholders? Stakeholders are, you know, the people or the group of people who are directly or indirectly involved with the product that we are developing okay like you have the end users you have the managers you have the developers and you have the regulators now who are these regulators like regulators could be the suppliers uh, the people who are supplying few things to our organization or you can say uh, the government uh, sector employees like for example few companies will be having hiring lawyers to make sure that they are not, they if they face any legal issues, the lawyer is taking care of and all. Okay, so such people, the third party people uh, are called as regulators. So all these people will come under the category who are called as stakeholders. So in requirement solicitation, we not only collect the requirements from the users, but we also value and we take the requirements from the stakeholders also. Right. So now let us see what are the various methods do we have in this requirements elicitation. So I told you requirements elicitation is gathering of requirements. So how can we collect those requirements? What are the various methods we have? So let's look into the list. So you can collect the requirements either by interviews, brainstorming sessions, felicitated application specification technique, which is called as FAST, quality function development, which is uh, deployment, which is called as QFD use case approach and ethnography. Using any of these methods, you can collect the requirements from the users and stakeholders in detail. So let's see what exactly are each one of them. Starting with interviews. Interviews is nothing but having a one-to-one -one conversation with the people who are asking us to develop the product. It could be the users or the stakeholders, right? So you prepare a set of questions and you start asking those questions and the people start answering them depending upon the answer they are giving you ask for more details right so this is generally a very common uh, uh, way of uh, uh, interviewing or common way of collecting the requirements in companies like for example when you are trying to any create a new software or you're trying to update a particular software company generally talks to its employees and it will have a direct conversation with them to collect the requirements so this is called as interviews let's talk about the next uh, method in requirements elicitation which is called as brainstorming sessions so here what happens instead of having a one-to-one -one interaction a group of people will sit together and they'll put all their ideas uh, into how to develop this particular system. So you collect all the ideas from all the people involved in this brainstorming session without judging. Okay, blindly you will copy all the ideas and finally all of them will sit together and they'll come up with which are the best ideas that can be used for the development of this particular system. Right, so this is basically used when you, you have to try to solve any problem related to your product development or not. Okay, like for example, you already have an existing uh, mobile application, you want to add a new feature into it, right? So, whether it is good or not, okay, will it uh, rise to any bugs or something like that? In such uh, scenarios, you will be going for this brainstorming sessions. The third one you have is facilitated application specification technique, which is also called as FAST, right? So, this is basically a proper meeting that is conducted in the organization. So you have a person who is called as the facilitator 
who is involved or who, who is leading the meeting he is the one who will be gathering all the people who are involved in the project development and he is going to collect ideas and discuss among themselves he'll make sure that everybody is having a clear picture as to how the product is going to be developed what are needed what are not needed everybody will be having clear picture he is the one who is going to make sure that everything is understood by everyone okay like uh, for example uh, say suppose you have a hospital management application that you want to develop which is used by all the people inside the hospital like the doctors the uh, nurses the it staff the compounders everybody is going to use so since you are developing a common application you make sure that people are sitting together and everybody is understanding what is the purpose of this particular product uh, you are taking inputs from them okay based on that you are collecting the requirements such procedure is called as facilitated application specification technique the next one you have is quality function development uh, sorry deployment which is called as qfd this is a method which is used to collect the requirements from the customer and directly convert those requirements to the system and the technical requirements system requirements and technical requirements like uh, uh, for uh, and this particular method is basically used while you are uh, trying to develop any electronic goods or you know or any manufacturing goods like cars mobiles and all in very rare cases it is used in softwares also okay so this is called as quality function uh, de deployment where you are converting the requirements that you are collected from the user directly into the system features and technical requirements the next one you have is use case approach so use case approach is basically used to understand how the system is going to exactly work when i develop it so you talk about a scenario and you assume that if a customer is interact interacting with my system in that particular scenario how is the step by step procedure going how is my system reacting with the customer okay you write down all these step by step procedures this is called as use case approach right so generally this is used uh, if you want to know how people are interacting with the system or if you want to know how my system will be reacting to the user needs and all in such cases you will be uh, using this approach which is called as the use case approach the next one you have is ethnography See, not many times or in many scenarios, customers will be able to explain us the problem of their existing system. Okay, why they do? Why do they actually need uh, a new software for their environment? In such scenarios, we'll be going with a method which is called as ethnography, where we will go to their workplace of the customer and we will actually look or watch what is actually the problem the users are facing. why they are asking us for this particular system okay so we start writing notes we observe it we ask them some questions we will see how they are working what problems are they actually facing in real time based on that we will get ideas as to what to be developed how to be developed and how is will that be uh, influenced uh, or it will be useful for them integrated in their work environment this is called as ethnography right so these are the various methods that we have to perform requirement elicitation and we can use any of the method depending upon the project that we are developing or the company also right so once these requirements are successfully collected using requirement elicitation we will perform the next level which is called as the requirements analysis requirements analysis is basically making sure that whatever requirements i have collected are clear complete feasible and they are not having any conflicts right so what exactly am i doing in this requirements analysis the first thing i will be doing is identifying the gaps so, so once i finish collecting all the requirements from the customer i will go through everything one after the other i'll check if if i'm missing any flow that is called as identifying the gaps if i am missing any flow i'll make sure to sit again with the customer and stakeholder and fill that particular gap okay the second one is resolving conflicts so you will be having n number of conflicts uh, it could be technical conflict legal conflict uh, it could be budget conflict any n number of conflicts will be there like for example 
when you are involving group of people while collecting the requirements one group of people want a very high standard user interface and the developer development team will think that no let's put it simple we don't want high standard user interface so there's a conflict that is happening so how to resolve these conflicts that is done inside this requirements analysis phase the next one you have is prioritizing requirements so after you finish identifying the gaps you know resolving conflicts and all the next thing you have to do is to give a priority or a ranking system to the requirements in that ranking order only the requirements will be successfully uh, developed one after the other okay so these are the main key tasks that are done in your requirement analysis now by doing all these tasks what is happening the first thing is you're getting clarity everybody who is involved in the development of the software is getting clarity as to what my system requirements are going to be like the second one is completeness right you're not leaving anything you are having a very clear picture as to what are the requirements what are needed and how to develop the particular software conflict resolution so priorly only you are sitting you are making sure that you are not having any sort of conflicts which is going to help you in future with the product development okay so these are the different things why your requirement analysis is important to us right we will continue in the next session thank you